If you are listening to this right now, it is necessary that you get out of your house immediately. I don't know how or why this is happening, but as far as I'm concerned, it's not safe for anyone to be listening to this inside right now. Get in your car, get to the nearest town or city, and listen there. Because I don't know how much longer it is until that thing comes around for you or anyone else. I don't know what this creature is, what it wants, or how many of them exist. All I know is that it is driven to kill, and it will stop at nothing to make sure it gets its job done. If you failed to follow these directions, at least lock all your doors and windows, turn off the lights, and stay somewhere safe. And make sure your presence is not known. Once you have done that, continue listening to this. And I will explain what is happening to the best of my knowledge. One night, I was sitting at home and watching TV. It was a rough week, so I was glad that the weekend finally came. I could sit around, do nothing, and not really care about anything. Everything seemed normal. Or so I thought. But while I was watching TV, I noticed something odd coming out of the forest in my backyard was a man. Well, I'm not sure I could exactly call it that. He was about five feet tall, pale white, completely naked, and had very long arms. And, I mean, very long arms. They were dragging behind him like dead weight, and the way he walked almost made it seem like they were a burden to him. His hands were dragging a very large object behind him that I could not see at the time. As he took each step, I noticed that he walked with a very lumbering motion. Each step seemed to drain the very life out of him. I almost wanted to help it. That is, until I saw its face. As it got closer to me, I saw that where his eyes were meant to be, there was nothing but two glowing red dots resting in swollen sockets on his face. He had no nose, and he lacked lips as well. His mouth was stuck in a very wide grin, and his teeth were very large. That is to say if they were teeth, they were more like nails, protruding from his bleeding gums. It had long, jet black hair that almost touched his waist. The thing paid no attention to me dragging whatever it was carrying behind him like it was his eternal duty. I could hear his soft panting, and saw fog coming from his mouth after each breath, due to the fact that it was the middle of winter. As he began to get closer to the house, I became more and more terrified. I quickly and silently shut off my TV, turned out my lights, and hid in my bedroom upstairs. I looked out my window, and continued to watch his actions. During this, the creature had now crossed my long backyard and made it to my house. At this point, I was finally able to see the horrific object it was carrying. In his arms, 
he was dragging the body of a young man behind him. I couldn't tell what the person looked like. He was too mutilated and torn up for me to be able to distinguish anything human about him. The creature then picked up the body and hung it against the wall with a meat hook, which was already pierced through the man's blood-drenched head. I nearly vomited at the sight of this. The creature walked backwards, stretching out its arms and letting out a subtle yawn. It was as if it had finally completed a very hard task. It walked up onto my back porch, its pace quickening after it had hung up the body. I waited, in silence and terror, the only noise coming from my quickly beating heart, pounding inside my ribcage. Then, it looked up at me, and its smile widened. I jumped back in horror as it stepped closer to my back door. It reached out with its long arms and grabbed a hold of my doorknob. I had suddenly realized I had forgotten to lock it. It slowly pushed open my back door and stepped inside. At this point, I was too stunned to do anything but lock my door and moved to the corner of my room. I cowered under a blanket like a child and waited in fear. I knew that I was next. I heard it climbing up my staircase, making as little noise as possible. When it reached the top of my staircase, it stopped for a moment as if contemplating on how to mutilate me. Then it grabbed a hold of the doorknob and began to shake it violently. It kept shaking the doorknob, hoping to break in, but to no avail. I heard the creature walk down the stairs and head out my back door. I watched the creature as it slowly skulked back into the forest. I waited for a few minutes, in case it came back with some kind of axe to chop down my door. I must have waited in my room for a half an hour, before I finally decided it was safe. I quickly ran down the stairs and out of my house. I got into my car and drove out of there as fast as I could. Whatever that creature was, I didn't want to be around when it came back. I went to the nearest town and rented a hotel. I stayed there for the night, and I decided I would report the incident to the police in the morning. I wasn't sure if they would believe me, but it was better than getting framed for a murder I didn't commit. The next day, I got up and drove to the police station to report the murders to the police. Right as I entered the station, however, I noticed everything seemed too calm. There were no missing person reports, no murder investigations taking place. It's as if the body I had seen last night had never existed. It might as well have been my imagination too, because when I returned home, the body wasn't there. In fact, there was no trace that any of last night's events had happened. It was as if it was a dream. Yeah, yeah, that had to be it. It had to have been a dream. I probably just woke up frightened and ran out of my house in a panic. I kept telling myself these things, knowing in my heart they were not true. That night, I locked myself in my room 
and turned off my lights as soon as it got dark outside. I wanted to make sure that thing had no idea of my presence. Though it was hard to go to sleep, I finally dozed off. Only for a short time, as I was awoken at around one in the morning, to the sound of scratching. I sat up in my bed and looked out my window, careful to stay hidden. To my horror, the creature was back, scratching against my wall. It was like it wanted to get my attention. When I looked at the wall where it had placed the bodies last night, I saw twelve more in their place. Each one was hanging in a different, gruesome way. Two people hung upside down from barbed wire wrapped around their ankles. Others were nailed to the wall. One man was hanging from his intestines, which had been very precisely removed from his body. I looked away from this terrible sight waiting for the creature to put me against the wall with the rest of those people. It once again opened my back door and entered my house, this time quicker, as if it was more eager to add me to his collection. He climbed up my staircase and started shaking on my doorknob. He kept shaking it, until it finally snapped and the door slid open. I watched as the monster's silhouette silently crept through my door. It knelt down next to me. At this point, I was too stunned to do anything and I just sat there waiting for my fate. It placed its hands on my chin and lifted my head up so that I was forced to look into its empty eye sockets. I felt its warm breath against my face, which smelled like blood. And then, to my surprise, it spoke. Father. It spoke with a slow, raspy voice. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. This creature calling me his father? Speaking almost like a child saying his first words. I never had a son. And I would know if I did have a son and it looked like this. It almost looked sad while it spoke. Father, are you scared, father? Why are you scared, father? I kept looking up at the creature in horror. What the heck was going on? Did this thing really think that I was his father? I sat in awe and shock at this horrible thing. Father, look outside. It took long breaths between each word, as if talking was a struggle. I made a gift for you. Do you like it? I forced myself to look out the window at the horrific artwork the beast laid out for me to see. The thing looked at me for a moment as I contemplated an answer. In a shaky voice, I said, Yes, I really 
really love your gift. Its smile grew with excitement. It put my head down, and I watched it slowly leave the room. I sighed with relief, and moved away from the doorway. Just as I did, however, the creature turned around and looked at me and said something that still, to this moment, causes me to fear for my life and everyone else's lives. Its final words to me are the reason I am getting this message out to everyone. As he crept out of my door for the last time, he said, I am not done, father. Stay here. I am going to get more people. He hasn't returned yet. <laughs>